there with Sheila Cole. I'm gonna have her tell you her story. Sheila, tell the world, this is on the world, your story. And I'm glad you're doing it with a smile. And talk to the camera. <laughs> I found Andy in a woman's magazine in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and decided he was the perfect person to illustrate something I was writing, a children's book. Wow. I'm a writer. I've been writing since I was, I guess, about six, but since I was 13 selling, so... Tell us. Tell us more. Oh, well, I, I, um, I knew I needed to get to New York to write uh, for money, <laughs> for more money than I was earning at the Milwaukee Journal. And uh, so I was at Wisconsin U, and so I told the dean that I was going to check out for next semester. And the dean said, uh, oh, I said, and please just send my deposit, which was $75. That is what the full uh, tuition was per semester. $75. Days. 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 I wouldn't tell you how old I am, but that no, we don't. Idea. No, you look great. <laughs> great attitude. And the dean said, we don't refund the deposit. And so I stayed an extra semester to not lose $75. <laughs> and then I went to New York. And uh, I went home first to Milwaukee. And I told my mother I needed to work and raise money to get to New York. And she said, but you haven't finished college. I said, I think I've finished what I need. I'll continue in New York if I get time. And that was that. And so off I went to New York on the first airplane that anyone in my 35 member family had ever been on. I was the first one on an airplane. One would think this was you were the first person. first person in a family of 35 that had ever been on an airplane. And off I went to New York and my mother had insisted that I stay in a Y, a YMCA, uh, at a YWCA for the first few days, she wanted to know where I was when I landed. Don't blame her. And so I said, well, all right, three days, that's the maximum. She said a week, and I said, three days, that's the maximum. Made a reservation, moved in, and as soon as my bags were on the floor, I went downstairs, used the public phone to call Andy Warhol. I looked him up in the phone book. Wow. Uh, I had seen his shoes. And I loved the drawings, and I said, that's the boy that's going to illustrate my book. Uh, the book never got written, although the, the, the book got written but never got published, and it never got drawings, and I lived with Andy for maybe a year or something like that. So you were his roommate for a year. Wow, everybody wants to know, how was it living with Andy for a year? Uh, it was good and it was bad. It was bad because Andy and I were the only ones earning any money. <laughs> I think eight or nine of us and nobody else worked. Or if they worked, they didn't contribute. Wow. How many hours did he work a week? He, did he work? Yeah. Well, he worked at his desk and so did I. You know, I didn't have a desk. I worked on my lap. <laughs> he had a desk. He was there before I got there. <laughs> so he had the only desk. And uh, and we were really you know like that very close. And uh, he was a great guy. Oh, he was he was absolutely neato. And uh, I'm going to guess how many years later, um, ten maybe or more, probably quite a bit more, fifteen or twenty. Uh, I was married. I had children, and I had an antique shop. And that was a sort of a sideline for my writing because I was still writing. I was a travel writer and I traveled. But I had the antique shop. And Andy used to live quite near there at the time and would come in all the time and buy something or visit and so on. And um, one day he came in years later, maybe four or five years later, and I said, Andy, you know, I was cleaning up a bookcase and I found two things that you gave me back when we lived together. And I, they weren't originals. They were um, Christmas presents to me, but they were uh, Xeroxes. One, one signed, one not. And so I said, you know, it seems sensible now, Andy, that you're earning a thousand dollars a picture. Mind that, a thousand. Wow, he was making a thousand dollars back then, a picture. That was nothing, but it was so much then to all of us. So much. Today it's yeah, nothing. Sure. 
uh, I said, maybe I ought to have you sign these. So he said, just bring them into the shop, and I'll, like my shop, and I'll sign them. And so about a day later or two days later, I managed to bring them in, put them under my counter, and waited for him to show up again, and he died three days later. Oh! And that was the end of that story. It was sad. So I had one of them were signed, and the other one was not. And ultimately, of course, I parted company with them for... What will you say is that one thing that Andy has given to you that you, uh, that you live in and you have taken with you and you've taken it to the level? Well, it's hard to say this, and it probably isn't radio or TV language, but I'd say before I met Andy, I had balls, and after I met Andy, I knew there was somebody else in the world that had balls, and neither of us needed them for what we went on to. I mean, it was just, I knew he was going to make it big, and he always knew I would, and, and we both did. <laughs> That is beautiful. So you said before, that, I love what you just said, the balls. You do have the balls. And if you had to describe balls, that guts to go out there and to take that risk and to take, do what you Take the risk and, and take your piece of it. Yes. What do you do now? Uh, I'm still an author. Very nice. And I have one book, uh, Don't Try It on 11th Street, another New York book. And... Um, that's published. It's available in all the obvious places, Borders and Amazon and so forth. And I'm working on a second book, which is about um, a niece of mine who was killed in Alaska on a fishing boat. Sorry to hear that. And so it's an Alaskan fishing story. How, how many hours a day do you spend writing your book or spend writing? A sinful amount. <laughs> A totally sinful amount. I read all the people like Joyce Carol Oates who you know sit down on any given hour and stay five hours no matter what happens you don't even go to the bathroom you simply sit there and sit and wait until the five hours are up and I don't do that I just go when things are nagging away at me and then I just write and write and write and write and write until I stop. <laughs> Where does that come from? Do you think it comes? Oh, you don't know. It, it, it just pours out and it pours out. I don't think anybody knows. I don't think anyone knows. I don't think you know how you got where you are. And I, I don't. Do. That's a very good question because nobody knows, and you absolutely just happens. And you just gotta, like you said, have that ball. Yeah. Balls. Just basically, That's just it. go and make it happen. So, what's brought you here today? Why are we here? Well, I'm a date <laughs> of Thomas. And I'm a 50-year friend of uh, Vito, but both of us are only 49, so you can figure that one out. Age doesn't matter. doesn't matter. You know what matters? What's inside the heart. That's right. What's in the heart. And this is a beautiful place. Isn't it great? And I think it's marvelous that this has made this proud.